These were the five books. Some of these. This is the little coffee shop I used to work in. Look around with. Hello. Hello. <laughs> What's this on the side? I nearly just said it's the Royal Opera House. Is that wrong? It's that age old thing you go in for one thing and end up leaving with multiple things. How are we all? I hope you're all very well. As well as you can be, welcome back to my channel and to a little vlog. I thought I'd vlog today and potentially tomorrow as well. Um, it feels good to be back. It feels really good to be back. I have just gotten back from uh, a week's holiday in Greece and it was just, it was wonderful. It was just what we needed. We went to Kos, which is such a small little island. I've been to Kos before, so kind of knew what we were get, we, what we were expecting. It's just the most relaxing, beautiful, serene island and the water is so blue and the beaches are so clear. I loved it. I had the most wonderful time and it felt really well needed. Uh, I read a lot. I locked my phone in the safe. I completely detached from life itself and it was just everything we needed. I felt like my shoulders have relaxed. I feel that tightly strong coil has just slowly started to unwind. You do hear sirens throughout this video, sorry. London is a, um, it's a hive of activity. I will come on to that. Apologies for the noise. Also my throat and ear, I think I've picked up some kind of, not really sure what it is, but obviously your ears and throat are connected. Um, I think it was due to the air con in our room. I've tested for COVID, I'm negative, thank goodness. So everything's fine. I'm just not particularly 100%, so if I do sound a little bit nasally and congested, that's why, and I might cough a little. But bear with me. Before we do get into the vlog, I just want to offer my sincere condolences to the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. I, it's a lot to take in. She was a constant in our nation across the world. She's the only monarch I've had in my lifetime, and we heard the news when we were having dinner on Thursday in Greece, and... um we both just stopped and just couldn't, we couldn't believe, you know, we just we couldn't take it in. It was, it was a lot, but she was, she was an incredible queen. She offered her life to the role and she was so tenacious in everything that she did. I almost feel a sense of happiness for her that she's reunited with Philip and they can, you know, continue their journey together wherever they may be. So I just want to offer my sincere condolences to anyone out there who is finding the news particularly difficult. There's a lot going on at the moment. We went to pay our respects at Buckingham Palace yesterday. We laid some flowers and had a little moment of reflection. Uh, so yeah, that's what this vlog's gonna be. It's just gonna be very chill. Me just pottering around the house. Um, we're actually going to the theater this evening. We had tickets booked for quite some time and we weren't sure if they were gonna be canceled because obviously um, of Her Majesty's passing, but they've said that it's gonna continue as normal. So I hope that's okay. By all means, if this vlog isn't for you, I completely understand. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of outline that at the start of this video. Uh, I thought I'd bring you over to our little reading nook. Um, I just placed this little oil painting that I got in a charity shop on the wall. I had this in my little desk area and I felt like I didn't really appreciate it that much there because it was on a shelf kind of out of view. So I've wall mounted it just near the fern. I think it looks really nice. It's kind of finished this little space off beautifully. But I thought I'd bring you over to our bookshelf because I actually read five books on while I was away on holiday. Um, that's what you get for when you aren't on your phone. So I thought I'd just quickly give you a little talk through of some of the ones I absolutely loved. So let me grab them. These were the five books. Some of these have been on our read list for a while. So the first one that I read actually was probably the one that I enjoyed the most. And I felt like I connected with the most. It's called The Midnight Library. I picked this up in Waterstones and a lot of you left comments saying that you loved it too. It's by Matt Haig, and he is a massive advocate of um, mental health, mental health awareness. Uh, I've recently found him and followed him on social media. He posts really inspirational quotes um, about suicide prevention, and um, I will point out that this book does touch on topics of suicide, but it makes you realise that you shouldn't regret the things that you haven't done, and makes you look forward to the things that you can do, if that makes sense. I don't want to talk about it too much because I just thoroughly recommend that you read it. So that was my... That, out of all of the books I read, this was my favourite. So I then moved on to The Husband's Secret by Leanne, or Leanne um, Morati, and this was fantastic. A real quick page turner. Um, quite a few characters in this book, so it was a little bit of a difficult one to keep up with, but 
I loved it. I finished this in a day. It was so, so good. This was The Third Wife by Lisa Jewell. My mum actually gave me this book to read. Zara and I both read it in about two days. It's fantastic. Lisa Jewell is a wonderful writer. I just realised, actually, I didn't read this book. Zara is reading the final book that I read um, currently because she didn't finish it on holiday. So I haven't got it to show you, but it was... Uh, the Curfew by T.M. Logan. I'll leave it on screen. I also got that in Waterstones and a lot of you said that was very good. I would thoroughly recommend you do give that a read because it's a really fast thriller. Page Turner, brilliant. And then lastly, this is the, the most recent book in terms of release dates. This was actually released in 2021. And it's called How to Kill Your Family. Which might sound a little bit bleak, but it's by Bella McKee and it's her first ever book that she's written. It's very funny, it's very humorous, but it's also got quite serious topics in there as well. So yeah, it, it's described as deliciously dark, chilling, but also laugh out loud funny. And to kind of balance out the darkness of the books that we took away, unintentionally dark, um, I recently picked up this. This is by the wonderful and fantastically talented Miriam Margulies and it is called This Much Is True. I'm kind of just in the early chapters of it but I've already laughed out loud because Miriam really encompasses an energy that I want to just translate in my life which is just the complete free-for-all of humour and not caring what other people think about you and just enjoying yourself for who you are and being unapologetic about it. She is fantastic. She wrote this book in lockdown. She's the epitome of British humour and she's fantastic. I didn't realise that she was Jewish and she talks about her Jewish upbringing. That's as far as I've gotten this and um, yeah, just really, really good. So I'll let you know how I get on with this. I know a lot of people tell me I need to get a Kindle. I do have a Kindle. Um, well, it was actually Zara's Kindle, but I just couldn't get on. I don't know, there's something about the physicality of a book. I'm such a traditionalist when it comes to books. Um, I just love the way they feel, I love that they are just like a physical thing and that you can re-gift them on to people once you've read them. So yeah, I do love books, although we may need another bookshelf potentially in this corner. That might be a next purchase. Sorry, I'm going to stop rambling. I've got some bits and bobs to do around the house, I've got some laundry to do, some housework. I need to do some actual work, admin, laptop time. So yeah, I'm just going to pick the camera up as and when. Let's get cracking on with the vlog. <laughs> So I've packed away all of my summer items, all of my swim shorts and beach towels and that kind of thing, all washed. After we came back from holiday, we were like a military operation. I said to Zara, we are just going to wash until everything is nice and clean. So I've packed everything away. I'm just going to seal up this bag. These are so good if you're pushed for space, if you live in like a flat, because they literally vac pack to next to nothing. So you just got to unscrew this and then put the vacuum on. You're good to go. There we are. I'm very lucky that my bed has some under bed storage. So I just slide it underneath and then we're good to go for another summer. It feels like it's been a particularly good summer this year. We've had some beautiful weather, albeit slightly too hot. I'm actually, I feel very satisfied that we've had a lovely summer because 2021 summer was short lived. I really feel like plus the holiday, we've had a nice extension of wonderful weather ready for the slightly cooler autumn temperatures. I've got some Ludovico Ionaudi playing in the background, so if that's what you can hear. I don't have a live um, piano player in my flat, <laughs> um, but I've just hung this little picture of Tower Bridge by my desk. I had this above my little unit in the corner, but I've had a bit of a rejig of some of my um, paintings and artwork, and I think this looks really nice in this little corner. It makes more of a space over here. So this is where I sit and edit. It's such a lovely little corner. And I just really enjoy just popping on the lamp and cozying up and getting cracking. And I rehung the two gold pictures in here. This is in our little toilet. And this, let me pop the light on. There we are. <laughs> so this is a mirror I actually thrifted at Christmas time. Does need a bit of a clean actually. The light has just reminded me. But yeah, this was a mirror that I thrifted in Ledbury, which is where my aunt and uncle live. Um, I found this in a charity shop, so I'm just going to give this a bit of a clean. But yeah, I think the gold ties in lovely, so it's very nice with the black. I still love this room. Okay, so I finished faffing on in my bedroom, and it's in a much better place now. I'm going to stop for some lunch. It's just gone too, so I need to, you know, eat. Otherwise, I'm probably not going to want dinner. It's basically just a bunch of leftovers. We made uh, fajitas last night, so there's a little bit of leftover fajita mix, and then just pop some coriander on top. Got some um, corn tortillas. A little bit of, uh, I think this aioli, like a, a garlicky dip. And I had this from Odyssey. This is some halloumi. So I'm just going to grow some halloumi. Uh, fry some halloumi, actually. And have some nice little light fajita halloumi wraps. 
there we are, that is lunch from leftovers. I'm just gonna wrap these up, not one-handed, and then devour these, because I'm quite hungry. This is my afternoon snack of choice. I like a little pick-me-up, I'm doing a treat, so I'm gonna have half of this caramel twirl, which is like a chocolate um, bar, and they're just delicious. The caramel flavor is elite. It's so good, with a handful of boobs and a little coffee with some oat milk, so yeah. This is my fuel. I'm gonna finish this big bottle of water and get cracking on with some emails. Okay, so I've just finished up at my desk and I'm gonna pop this box to the charity shop. Zara did a bit of a clear out um, of just some bits and bobs that she no longer wears. This was her old laptop bag from her previous job. And it was quite a big and bulky one, so she's just sized down. So just little bits and bobs that we can drop off to the charity and there's some bric-a-brac at the bottom too. So I'm gonna take that along. shop and one thing I definitely have noticed and I've said this for quite a while now but charity shops definitely are putting their prices up um, which is a shame because obviously a, a lot I shop in charity shops so I mean, it's a really great way to find pieces sustainably you know rather than buying new um, but I know a lot of people shop in charity shops because they're supposed to be really affordable and accessible um, which is a shame because some of the pieces in there weren't worth the price tag, in my opinion. There were some lovely pieces in there. I tried on the most amazing jacket. It was like a four suede vintage jacket. It was £25, which is a little bit steep, in my opinion. Anyway, I'll show you the bits that I got. Only three things, actually. I picked up two books. <laughs> Not that we need any more, but the rate that we fly through them, I think it's always good to get a couple. So um, I got The Split. I've actually got this on my Goodreads and I've heard really good things. Lee Child is a fantastic author and said, I'm a huge fan of Sharon Bolton, who is the author, and this is her best yet. This was uh, two pounds. And then I got this. Shari Lupina is a fantastic writer. And this is A Stranger in the House. And she was the author of The Couple Next Door, which is also a really fantastic book. This was £1.50. And then I got this. This is a really nice terracotta. It's slightly battered, but I actually quite like it. It's a terracotta ball. Um, I thought this would just be really great for when we do curries and stews. It's slightly larger than the ones that we have, which usually I do like tapas and stuff in. Um, it was eight pounds, but they marked it down to four. It hasn't got a brand or anything on it. It's absolutely well used. So I'll give it a good old clean. So I've just gotten changed and I'm heading out to meet Zara after work because we're seeing Dear Evan Hansen this evening. Uh, which is something I want to see for so long. It's won, I think, three Olivier Awards, which is kind of like the awards for Broadway and West End musicals. And I've heard it's really good. The soundtrack is fab. I've listened to it before without seeing it. Um, so yeah, this is my outfit. So this was actually something I picked up in a charity shop recently. I shared it in a previous vlog. It's from Reese, and it was eight pounds, which is so good. It's like a little zip through. It's got a nice blue stripe. And um, yeah, I've just got it with some trouser chino style navy trousers these are from next i've had these for a couple of years and um just some lacoste trainers it is a very rainy and dreary evening in london We're just about to head into zz's to have some dinner so let's go So we just finished our dinner, that was absolutely delicious. Honestly, I love ZZ's so much. We're in Covent Garden, and just waiting for Zara to finish up in the loo, and we're gonna walk to the theatre. I've had so many messages on Instagram from people who've seen Dear Evan Hansen and said that it's very emotional. If you know me and you've watched this channel for a while, you know that I am always an emotional person, so I'm probably gonna cry. Oh, hello, <laughs> hello. <laughs> so I just finished work. So she's, um, let me pop this under you. So um, yeah, we're, we're gonna head there now. We're about uh, half an hour early, so we can get a little drink inside if you want. Yeah, good plan. I'm just trying to get the No, that's all right. Um, yes, yeah, so we're gonna walk there, and uh, I'll let you know how it is afterwards, but prepare to cry. Are you in the mood to cry? Uh, <laughs> Zara's always in the mood. Always in the mood. For everything. <laughs> 
What's this on the side? I nearly just said it's the Royal Opera House. Is that wrong? I feel like it is, isn't it? That's the Royal Opera House. Yeah. See, I doubt myself. I was thinking of the Sydney Opera House. This is our uh, Royal Opera House. Yeah, this is Sydney. <laughs> Except we aren't in Sydney, we're in London. But yeah, this is, um, this is where you see the opera. Look at those statues up there. Isn't that incredible? They've got all of the placards outside to commemorate the passing of Queen Elizabeth. Good morning. So it is Wednesday today and we had the most incredible time last night at Dear Evan Hansen. I I cried as I anticipated I would cry because I am a crier <laughs> and I'm proud of it. It was it was it was it was a tough watch. It was really tricky and it I touched on topics of loneliness and um you know depression, suicidal thoughts, that kind of thing. It it was a it was a difficult but enjoyable watch if that makes sense. It touched on intrusive thoughts, dark moments, um, anxiety, social anxiety, just a lot of mental health problems, but the vocals were incredible and I didn't realise there was a film as well, so definitely gonna pop that on my to watch list, so I'd thoroughly recommend that you um, watch it if you haven't. Anyway, today I am heading into town to meet Ewan. We have a couple of meetings this morning at a couple of different locations in London. So um, yeah, I went to the gym this morning, got dressed, had some breakfast, we're gonna meet him now. This is what's known as the transitional period. So I'm still in a t-shirt if I get too hot. I've got these trousers on that I had yesterday. This is really nice and lightweight, just cotton chinos. And then this is a really lightweight linen green jacket just to pop on in case I do get a little bit chilly, but it's about 20 degrees today, so we should be good. I'm at my first meeting of the day and it's a little press day. And some gorgeous, gorgeous brands here. I thought I'd show you them. There's a real mix. Um, so I'm just going to film, because it's quite loud, there's a few people here. I'm just going to film some bits and bobs and I'll leave a little caption on screen of each of the brands. And um, some gorgeous, gorgeous ones from lots of different designers, so enjoy. Hello. Hello. We just finished up in the press day. It was so nice. It's really just, cool. just lovely to see such nice things, isn't it? Like, a lot of nice things. A lot like of that. nice yeah. things. We're like magpies. We just want yeah. to like feel everything and look at it all. But anyway, we're off to do something slightly festive, yeah. aren't we? It's um, well, it seems a bit strange to talk about Christmas in September, but as you know, Christmas, you know, for everyone gets thought about relatively early, especially this year as well. I think a lot of people are planning ahead, yeah. you know, trying to like spread the cost and that kind of thing. So. We're gonna head to the big Christmas press show. I think that's what it's called. Big Christmas press yeah. show. We went to this last year. Yeah. And it was actually on the day of the Blogosphere Awards, oh, which right. you and I hosted, which is just created. That was a year yeah. ago. How was that a year ago? Madness, isn't it? That was such a yeah. like a blur of a day. I feel like we were both very nervous, so we didn't uh -huh. we didn't drink. No. <laughs> which for us is. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean we normally do. Going on? Um, so yeah, we, we we just were really tame and we were quite jittery, so we just did a flying yeah. visit. Whereas I feel like this year, we could just really take it in and get in the, I mean, in the festive mood, is that yeah. thing? We can enjoy it, can't yeah, we? Yeah, exactly, and there's actually yeah. a Prosecco bar, which is very exciting. So yeah. Um, yeah, we're gonna head there now. It's about half an hour on the tube, so let's get in the mood for Christmas, why not? <laughs> Ewan's got his nose on the real tree. <laughs> so we are at the uh, Business Design Centre in London, and we are at the Christmas press show, so we are, submerged in Christmas trees and just everything wonderfully festive. This is Dobby's, which I've actually never heard of before, but they're a Scottish company, but they've got locations all across England um, and London as well. And we're just admiring all the beautiful foliage. It's gorgeous, let me show you, isn't it? Or is it real? I think it's real, mate. Oh my gosh, wow. Oh yeah, no, it is real, you're right. Look at this tablescape. I mean, it's huge, <laughs> but beautiful. It smells so nice. And then Ewan just spotted these little candles, but they're battery powered, so definitely safer. I love this foliage that they've slotted into a Christmas tree. That, is this called flopping? It is, isn't it? I don't know if it's called that, it probably isn't, but yeah, this is, um, it's very pretty. 
And the lovely woman was just telling us about these. They're trying to give more sustainable plants for Christmas. So these are a nice alternative rather than a, is it a poinsettia. Um, so yeah, they're gorgeous. Very, very pretty and very festive. It's a lot to see. So I'll take you guys around. Or oh, Ewan's just... <laughs> I'm just trying the packed coffee uh, Christmas blend. I've had the advent calendar last year and it's absolutely delicious. You get each individual little sachet of all of the days of Christmas. Oh, is this my espresso? Thank you very much. This is the Christmas blend, so I'm going to give this a try. It's got a beautiful crema, very, very nice. They also have the um, pods as well, so if you brew your coffee in an espresso, you can do those too. We've just found this store, it's called Bake by Step, and look at this. Buddy the Elf and a cookie. And then also, you jingle my bells. And then we've also got Kevin McAllister. Oh my god, it's amazing. They are handmade in East London if you want to check them out. They can cookify anything apparently. So we've just popped by the v and store, which is honestly one of the most amazing museums in London. If you ever get the chance to visit, it's completely free. Um, and we're just having a look at some of their Christmas gifting. They've got these incredible Christmas decorations that are exclusive to the v &A. So if you are wanting something that is very exclusive of the museum that you can't get elsewhere. They've even got one of the King and Queen, which is obviously very lovely. We've stopped off for a little Prosecco break because, cheers dear. Yeah, I know, honestly. <laughs> very nice to come to these things. However, it's a, it's a lot because it's all Christmas and it's just a lot of information. So we've got to kind of just take regular breaks, take it all in, and then go back to talk to people. Otherwise it's just like, <laughs> So we've just found this wine advent calendar from Lathwaite's Wine and how good is this? You basically get a bottle of wine each day for the whole of the Christmas period and then on the 24th day you get a larger bottle which is so fab, I think this is already open so the bottle would be in there and you can have a whole mix, they're $69.99 on pre-sale so I'll link them down below if you are interested they do them in red, white and mix so we've just popped by Paper Chase and they have some of the most amazing Christmas decorations Look at these. Got a little gin bottle. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Some nice ones here too. Got a little avocado, cocktail, peanut butter and beans on toast, even a vegan sausage roll and a margarita. Look at these as well, a little peanut butter. Oh my gosh, a sushi platter as well. How cool is that? <laughs> that was very nice. We are yeah. positively festivised. Very festive. Very festive. <laughs> oh yeah, no, same. <laughs> very professional, dear. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was so much fun. It was so nice to um, just meet like brands face to face and yeah. obviously just discuss all things Christmas, which yeah. is, you know, always lovely. But um, yeah, it's turned into a most beautiful day in London. The sky is very blue. But yeah, let me know down below if you're excited for Christmas. And a lot of you are talking about that so yeah we're gonna head on the tube now and um I will head this way we're actually in a place called Angel which I don't often oh there's a charity shop Ooh, so fan. yeah this is such a nice part of town I don't often come to but it's lovely so if you do get the chance to visit London do check out the Paul Borough of it is Lington isn't it yeah it's into an angel it's really yeah. pretty it's quite it's like feels like quintessential London yeah like it's like bookstores it's yeah floristries yeah and everything in between but yeah we're gonna hop on the tube so I'll catch you guys when I'm home I need to get cracking on with dinner I said the Zara I'd make a slow cook of chili oh lovely although it's currently very bright and very warm so <laughs> yeah. I don't know it's uh, the best dinner to have but yeah I'll uh, get cracking on with that so I just ended my vlog to say that I need to get home to crack on with dinner lo and behold look who's here domesticated goddess that you are with your bow in your hair Zara's had a haircut by the way <laughs> She's no, I just went to work today. Mm. Quite surprised. I like, like this straight. I love your hair. I literally said to everyone, I've had a breakdown. Like, no, I think this is not. my fear of turning 25. But I did just go to H&M. It's just a very a nice look. length, yeah. And there's all of these bows in there. So I feel like I've started the trip. No, the ball is nice. The ball is very nice. Anyway, and yeah, I'm just getting cracking on the dinner. God, how the tables have turned. So I just started off by sauteing onions with peppers, some chilli oil. Have you put any garlic in? Yeah. Look. Poor garlic. Oh god. We don't have any chili. We do, they're in the freezer. Oh. And we do some chopped tomatoes with some black beans, a leftover jar of hot chili sauce, and some kidney beans as well. Good tip, if your chili peppers um, are looking like past their best like these were, 
pop them in the freezer and you can grate them with your ginger directly into any dish and obviously they defrost. So dinner is served. I've popped some extra jalapenos on mine. It is quite spicy, but um, I like the heat. And then we've just got some nice little tortilla chips to dip in and some nice little um, garlic aioli as well. Delicious. Finishing dinner with some nice little cookies. These are the ones that we got in Costco. We've just defrosted them. And I'm having a pumpkin spice, what is this one? It's a pumpkin spice tea um, from Bird, Bird Blend Tea Co. We're also watching Devil in Ohio on Netflix. It's really good run, uh, episode three. Would you like to show my mug? Oh yeah, Zara's got a um, some normal mug as well. A little pumpkin. Oh, it was no, from um, Asda, wasn't it? Asda, £3.50. £3.50. Last one. There we are. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Good morning, folks. So today is Thursday, and I'm having a bit of a kitchen day this morning. Well, kitchen morning. Um, I'm heading into town later on. Um, but yeah, I'm doing a bit of cooking this morning, so I thought I'd show you what I'm up to. In this bowl here, we have three bulbs of elephant garlic. Now, this is actually harvested from my aunt and uncle's garden in August. Also, sorry if you can hear the washer, I'm just doing a little load. Um, yeah, so this is elephant garlic. So traditionally, I mean, these apparently, according to my aunt, aunt and uncle, were small for this year's harvest. They can actually be a lot bigger. But I've had them hung up outside Kieran for, I think Kieran's the right word, um, for about, yeah, just over a month. Um, I did intend on roasting these before we went away on holiday, but I just ran out of time. So quite similar to traditional garlic. However, they're a lot less punchy um, but lovely, subtle flavour, so I'm actually going to keep one of these whole, but I'm going to roast the other two bulbs, so I'm going to get cracking on with that now. So I just got one of the bulbs in half, look how amazing that is, it just blows my mind that this thing, you know, it's like three times the size of a regular garlic, but it's not as, garlic can be pretty punchy, so this is like a nice milder alternative. Okay, so the garlic is wrapped in tinfoil, drizzled in oil, salt and pepper, and I'm going to roast it for I'm going to say about an hour, let's go for an hour, sorry our oven timer is <laughs> wrong, nothing in our house ever is the right time. Also, my herbs are doing quite well. I was quite concerned about them when we went on holiday because I wasn't particularly sure that they were going to survive. But um, yeah, they've done really, really well. So I'm going to get cracking on with the ragu base. So uh, the meat, uh, well, the meat, <laughs> plant-based meat that we're using is from Meatless Farm. Um, it's the plant-based mince. We've had this before and it's very, very tasty. So I'm going to start with the sofrito base. We've got carrots, one onion, and then before we went on holiday, we had some celery sticks in the fridge that were looking past their best, so I just quickly diced it up. Actually, on the morning of our flight, I was like, we've got some food that I need to take care of. So um, I diced it up and popped it in a freezer bag. Um, so that's going to be the base of the sofrito. Good tip. If you want to get ahead, you can literally blitz all this up in a food processor and keep it in this bag. And then you've got the base of loads of different sauces, stews, and soups in seconds and it's so much cheaper than buying it from the supermarket. Now the secret to a good ragu, I appreciate this is in a traditional ragu because obviously you'd use beef and pork, is thyme. Now not the herb thyme, but just thyme. You need it on the lowest heat possible. You can see it's just say, simmering away. I've added two bay leaves just for a nice little depth of flavor. And this just has to reduce down because it's quite loose now. So if you'd pop this in the lasagna, it would obviously be, you know, quite runny, quite a sloppy lasagna, which some people do like. But I like mine quite like set and firm. So yeah, just leave this to do its magic. It's packed full of flavor. Haven't seasoned it yet. I popped a little bit of salt in the sofrito base, but that's it. I'm going to pop one stock cube in as well just to give it that nice richness. Pop the lid slightly ajar and leave it to do its thing for a couple of hours. So I'm in town and um, I'm off to meet a very lovely YouTuber actually. Um, I followed him online for years, such a nice guy, it's called Joel, Joel Wood. Um, I'll leave his channel linked down below. Just makes really nice videos, very similar to my style as well, just like nice little vlogs, just really wholesome videos. He's got a lovely dog called Ava as well. Um, he lives just down the road from me, which is really, well, not just down the road, but you know, um, quite close. So yeah, really nice. So um, we're just having a little coffee in town, which is nice to actually meet people with this job. It's just a lot of you on your own just talking to a camera, talking to you guys. So it's nice to actually meet people in person. So we're gonna grab a little coffee in Central and just have a little catch up, which would be very nice. So this is it. This is the little coffee shop I used to work in back in 2016. It's just on Lowndes Court. So um, yeah, it's a really lovely coffee shop. So I'm just gonna sit outside and wait for Joel to arrive. 
So I completely forgot to vlog when I was having a coffee with Joel. We were just literally chatting for about an hour. It was so, so nice to just actually meet someone in person. I said this to him, so it was very nice to actually talk to people opposed to just digitally, virtually, if that makes sense. I'll leave Joel's channel linked down below. But Zara's home from work as well. She says more flowers, more flowers. Can I Zara got these flowers through work. So these gorgeous, look at these. I mean, they are dying slightly already, but um, she got these yesterday. <laughs> And look at you, they're bigger than your head. We also nipped into Primark Home on the way back and uh, got some of this four foliage, which is very autumnal. It looks, how nice does that look like contrast to that? I also got some bits and bobs in Primark Home as well, so I'll quickly show you what I got. It's that age old thing, you go in for one thing and end up leaving with multiple things. I just needed some hangers, as boring as that is, that the Primark ones are really good because the metal and they're three pounds for five, so they take up little to no room in your wardrobe. So I've got two packs of those. I'm ready for the swap over from summer to autumn. Um, I got this jar, which I thought was really nice. I'm gonna pop my coffee beans in this next to my uh, new fancy machine, which I'm loving, by the way. I am so, so happy with it. Uh, so yeah, this was four pounds. It's got a nice like wood bamboo lid, so I'm gonna give that a rinse and pop my beans in that. I got this candle as well, which I just thought was really nice. It's a really like cool pattern. It is wild mint and basil. I will say about Primark candles, they're not punchy, are they? They're not, they haven't got like a, this was five pounds, but obviously once this is done, you can keep the little pot as well. It's a lovely ceramic pot, so I thought that was really nice. And then lastly, I just got this little blue vase. I just thought that would be nice as a little decorative piece. This was three pounds. Someone's excited. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a hearty portion. It's got a nice little salad. These are our olive um, servers that we've got in Greece. It's worth mentioning, we didn't eat today. Yeah, we actually haven't eaten today. Well, I had some eggs for breakfast and that's it. And um, yeah, I've got a nice little glass of wine. Chin chin. Happy Thursday.